Measuring the moments. Of you. And you. And you. Together. We measure. Take pleasure. In moments. Brand new. In episode two, Derek leads us through a too close encounter. Tony delivers an allotment diary. And Jackie tells us of an unexpected Mother's Day. But first, here's Derek. When I look through my diaries and my notebooks, what I was conscious of was to what extent we'd been prepared for the lockdown before it actually formally came. And I was involved with so much activity, some of which should have stopped earlier. And of course, by the time we got to March, um, uh, Sp Spain and Italy were heavily uh, on, on, under a lockdown. And so I suppose the most significant event um, occurred on March the 11th, uh, which was, it, it involved two uh, things that happened that really I don't think should have happened. One was I went to the Unison AGM in Bolton. Um, I, I'm still an active member of my uh, union uh, as a retired worker and um, I'm absolutely convinced if you think about it a union has responsibility for health and safety and Unison uh, is the uh, uh, you know the, the organizer of workers like health workers social uh, uh, local authority social workers and care workers and yet we went ahead in, 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 in the Lancastrian suite uh, with, with this meeting. And I, I was conscious of when we were queuing up for our food that we were, had sorts of mental distances. Um, and they, we were given large tongues to pick up the sandwiches and things like that. When we, when we eventually got sat down, we were, we were at tables and the, the, there was probably perhaps 150 people at this meeting. And the reason they'd come was because Bernard Gallagher, our branch secretary and an, an activist for over 30 years, was retiring. And so the leadership of the union had then encouraged us all to get to this meeting to honor Bern, Ber, Bernie, who was rightly recognized as someone, or, you know, who was a great leader of uh, uh, the, the workers during that period. Um, on the same day, on the same day, I couldn't stay for the party. They were going off to a bar. So this is how, you know, they were, they were going off to a bar to celebrate uh, uh, Bernie's thing. But I couldn't do that because I had to make my way to Liverpool for another event that should have been canceled, which was the Liverpool uh, football match with Atletico Madrid. Now, I had fully expected this to be pulled off by the authority, but then I realized it coincided with the top Cheltenham race and you, you, you know the, the four days of the Cheltenham race so thousands of um, uh, uh, people were gathering at Cheltenham and many of those were representatives of the ruling class so I, I suddenly realized that the reason why the Liverpool game went ahead was actually you can't stop the game of the working people if you allow the ruling classes which the sport of kings to go ahead so it's so clear why we were allowed to crowd in you can imagine with the threat of the virus 
being a serious one, I had mixed feelings about the game going ahead. Um, because obviously, those of you who are into football will know that actually my team's played rather well this year. My, my head, my health and safety head, said the game should be cancelled. Um, amazingly, on the Saturday, on the, at the Bournemouth game, when I asked the guys next to me, they said, yeah, of course Jimmy can have our ticket. And this is the, 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 uh, one of our tickets. So that, that uh, you know, th that made me more motivated to go to the match, because there's my mate I only see once in three years or so, either in Canada or here, and he was in Liverpool. You can start recording after the 4th of July when we've all been to the hairdressers. <laughs> I keep thinking I've got a fly on the back of my neck and it's my hair. <laughs> Mine's started turning up now. Well, <laughs> you grow growing yours. I've been likened to Liberace. <laughs> yes. Quentin <laughs> Frizz. Uh, Einstein. No. Arthur no. Marx. Uh, <laughs> And that's about it, really. But it's, uh, you could dye it blonde and do Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Not blonde, orange. orange. Amongst the famous names, here's our Tony. Good morning. This is the allotment I share with my mate Mike. And it's kept me sane in a way during this lockdown and the pandemic. Coronavirus has caused us all a lot of problems. I hope you're all safe anyway. I'm just looking at some rhubarb. This is only a quick tour round the allotment. I'm at first early potatoes, and as we come here, just in front of us, this giant edifice, it's like the Taj Mahal, isn't it? Eh? We built that ourselves, and you can move it round from plot to plot. Great for growing brass brassicas in. Now just these we're looking at now is beetroot and some peas. Coming round here to where the greenhouse is, got lots of leeks, a bit thin at the minute but they will come on and then look at them like Roman legions, onions, they're the winter onions and just coming round we've got garlic which I've already took some out and we've got these onions will be ready probably July, August just uh, here, more potatoes, King Eddie's, uh, different varieties, and under the nets, here we've got cabbages, cauliflower, uh, broccoli, forgot about them. Oh, some beans there on that wigwam. Uh, more leeks and there's Barry, neighbour of mine, just watering his uh, spuds over here, I'll just take it in this net it's like, I'll tell you what, it's like the Tate Gallery more tomatoes, look at these rascals and down at the bottom, sweet corn, beautiful and if I can take you into the greenhouse quickish because I think I might be running out of battery I'm not sure but here is the greenhouse vents open got more tomatoes in here look at them rascals there Shirley we've got Alicante uh, Moneymaker the old favourites my Mandy, and I'm just coming down here to show you a little cucumber already. There we go. That's a cucumber. Hopefully, won't be too long before we're eating them. And even at this time of the morning, half past nine ish, it's just under 80 degrees. Hope it's been a little bit of interest for you anyway. When we took this plot over, 
There is no greenhouse, no shed, and everybody needs a shed for the brewing facilities. And I just love it. Quite a lot of plots down here. Everybody's really helpful. If you need any help, you're not sure about anything, it's great. Morning everyone. I just thought I'd give you a little update on uh, how everything's going in the space of two weeks. The tomatoes are starting to ripen. Chilies there, coming on nicely. And remember the start of our show last week? The little baby I showed you. The cucumber. Isn't nature wonderful? Look at that. In two weeks, it's grown. It's massive. And there's his mate. Just to give you an idea of the size. And that's all happened in two weeks. You can have Van Gogh, Leonardo. Give me nature every time. These are some of the early potatoes. I don't know whether you can see them. Just dug them up straight from the ground. And look at the rhubarb over here. Like Canadian redwoods. Absolutely brilliant. Around here more spuds. Oh. There's the seed potato. As we go around here, there's lettuce, beetroot, and there's the Tasmahal again. Absolutely brilliant. I just want to show you these um, cabbages. You wouldn't want one to drop on your head, I'll tell you. They're like medicine balls. Oh. On his knees there, that's my mate Mike. <laughs> and round here, just look at these beauties. Yeah. Look at the head on that. It's bigger than a football. I'll tell you what, they're absolutely amazing these things. And we actually had one last week for dinner. Beautiful. Anyway, just give you a quick glance round. It's a lovely day. Not as many people on as I thought there would be today. But, more tales from the allotment in another couple of weeks. Come on, Sandy, you're, 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 I can see you. Come on, show us your rhubarb. <laughs> Good quality. I've worked it out. I think there's enough for everybody on this Zoom call to make a pie with. <laughs> I've got enough of my own, thank you. Yeah, I'm with. <laughs> my uh, story is about Mother's Day 2020. Here's our Jackie. Just before Mother's Day, I'd been in hospital and I'd had an operation. And I'd also got shingles, so I wasn't very well. So I wasn't going out, and I wasn't going out shopping. My sister and my eldest son were shopping for me. And they were saying, I can't get everything that you want from the supermarkets. There's nothing on the shelves. And I was thinking, well, that's a bit odd, isn't it? A bit strange. Everywhere you go, there's a supermarket. But I wasn't really aware of what it was like outside the home. Anyway, we decided not to go out for Mother's Day and that the children would come to my house, which they did. And the first to arrive were Luke and Rebecca. They live in North Wales. And they came and I was so pleased to see them. And I had some, a couple of beautiful Mother's Day cards, a funny one and one with beautiful words, which is what I normally get. And then Luke said to me, oh, I've got a gift for you, Mum. So I said, all right, thank you. And I gave me a pack of four toilet rolls and a small box of chocolates and I thought well this is a bit of a joke a bit of a wind up and then Rebecca said oh I've got something for you as well so I said all right thank you love so she gave me two deodorants some washing up liquid some TV brushes and four bars of soap and I'm thinking this is definitely a wind up well, in walked Matthew who is my eldest son and he's got a bunch of flowers in his hands and I thought, oh, that's 
you don't play. I said, oh, they're lovely, thank you. So he said, are you sure? He said, because I just had to plunge my hand into a tub of water in the supermarket and pull out a bunch. He said, and I had to run to the checkout before I got mugged for them. So I said, right, okay. And I'm really laughing by this time. He said, but I thought you something else. So I said, all right, okay. And then he hands me a pack of mince meat. And he said, it's 5%. He said, in the size that you want. So I said, okay, thank you. He said, but there's more. <laughs> I said, what else is there? He said, there's a pack of sausages. <laughs> really falling apart laughing here. And I said, this is definitely a wind up, isn't it? And they said, no. And they looked at each other and they just said, no idea what it's like to go out and shop out. And I thought, no, I haven't. Anyway, I thank them and we had an absolutely lovely day. Um, lots of fun, lots of laughter, a nice takeaway. And I have to say, it's one of the best Mother's Days I've ever had in my life. And also the most unusual, but the most needy presents I've ever had from them. I'm so proud of them. They obviously thought Mother's Day through and the kiss through, and I was using definitely all of them for weeks afterwards. So that's my unusual Mother's Day. Thank you. You're never alone with a what? Tapeworm. <laughs> <laughs>